Yeah. I, I, was, I was waiting for some awesome entrance from Kelly Ford. Oh, yeah, yeah. I still have, uh, have to do that. Uh, yeah, uh, for everyone watching, we have um, welcome to the user group. And uh, Ryan, I think we have some issues with your background noise. Get some more or laundry? Or what kind of background noise are you getting? A large fan? If so, I will um, work on that. Yeah, I think that might be it. Let's see what we can do here. Okay. <laughs> what is <Wow>. that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, like a, it sounds like a jet's taking off. Yeah. Um, what the control to mute me? Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Wow, see if you can, um, is it the fan you think? Maybe you can type. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know what that was. Yeah. Anyway, so we're uh, obviously, this is the, the second time in, and uh, we're, uh, have some, some issues we'll still have to resolve over the, over the coming weeks. But hey, it's live. What do you heck? What do you, what do you expect? Um, so today, uh, we're going to cover a couple things. We have two presentations. One by uh, Patrick Ryan and the other one by Ryan Moore. Patrick is going to be showing us um, his uh, classifieds solution that he built for his website, Local Living Ads. And of course, he built that with XMod Pro. So uh, we're anxious to see what that looks like. And then Ryan, if he is able to f fix the, uh, I don't know, it kind of sounds like an out of control remote control car uh, running across his desk, but uh, <laughs> if he's able to fix those. Uh, those sounds, then uh, we'll have him present on the um, Google Maps integration that, that he's done with XMod Pro. Uh, just so you know, we're doing things a little bit differently than last time. Um, before, we essentially invited everybody, and uh, so you could always see the, the videos. Uh, but since we're getting more people who are uh, wanting to watch, and we want to record all of this, uh, we're going with the Google Hangouts on air. And so that means that we'll have, if you want to present, just let me know and uh, we can invite you and then we'll, we'll get you on and you can do your presentations at this week or any other week uh, or any other month that we're, we're doing these sessions. Uh, just send me an email. Uh, that's kford at dnndev.com. Or uh, you can send Melinda an email, mford at dnndev.com. And we'll, we'll get you set up. Uh, we'd love to have you guys. This is really this is an online virtual user group, so we want to present it in a similar fashion. So if you've got things that you're working on, projects you're working on, uh, if it's involving XMon Pro uh, or a technique that you found, uh, how to use XMon Pro in a different way or even in a standard way, you want to just kind of teach someone how to, um, let's say, redirect a user after uh, they've entered, a, entered uh, records in a form, uh, whatever it may be, you uh, are free to uh, present here at the user group. Um, so without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, pass this along to... Oh, I should say, though, uh, if you do have questions because you can't actually talk to us, uh, open up the group chat window and uh, type in your messages there. Melinda will be monitoring it, and we'll, we'll also be looking at it. We'll try to answer your, any of your questions uh, to the best of our ability. So go ahead and uh, type in the uh, group chat window. Next time, we'll try the Q&A. Uh, feature on the Hangouts. So that is, uh, that's my short introduction. Thanks for coming. And uh, we'll be doing this every month, uh, the fourth Thursday of every month, which essentially most months is the last Thursday, but not every single month like this month. So fourth Thursday of every month uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, and uh, for our friends in Europe, 7 p.m. British Standard Time. All right. Without further ado, let me introduce uh, Patrick Ryan, and he has a site called Local Living Ads. You can get to it at localliveinads.com, and Patrick has been heavily utilizing XMod Pro for his website, and... Uh-oh. All right, there we are. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I have no idea what happened. I got volume back. Okay, um, so uh, sorry about that, Patrick. I, I was building up to something really great for you, um, but 
Yeah, so he's got a lot of things, actually, that he's done, some really innovative ways that he's leveraged Xmon Pro throughout all of his site to build lots of different things, especially a lot of uh, community-oriented things and messaging things. Uh, today he's going to be showing us uh, how he built the classified section. I actually just finished this uh, about a week or two ago, as I, as I understand it. Uh, classified solution for his local living ads uh, site. So without further ado, Patrick, take it away. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. This is Patrick you know, with Reflect Media Group and Local Living Ads and part of the DNN Dev team and a few more titles. And I'm going to begin with sharing my screen. Let's hope this works. Let's try this. All right. If you guys can let me know if you can see my screen, you should see localivingads.com and it should say, Hello, Sarah. Are we good? Oh, I can't hear you, Kelly. I can give the chat room a second to respond. Yeah, you're, you're good, Patrick. You're good. Okay. Awesome. Okay, guys. Well, this is a massive website that I've been developing for a couple years now. And my goal in Xbox Pro development and DNN development is to make any website that I build not look like DNN. <laughs> and and what, I, what I mean by that is I don't like cookie cutter stuff. And utilizing Xmon Pro, I always want to push it to the next level and take things to where when people look at it, they go, wow. And you know, when other Xmon Pro users uh, look at some of the things that I built, they're like, wow, man, that's really cool. And so what I want to express is is the time that's spent with Xmon Pro and taking Xmon Pro to the next level it has created this. So this is locallivingads.com, and I'm going to be showing you just one section of this website and that is the local classifieds. And they are just that. They are local classifieds for our local area. That's in western Kentucky and southern Illinois for me, uh, which allows anyone to create a user account, create a classified seller account, and post ads. It's a very smart system uh, that gives the classified posters points for when they post. After they receive a certain amount of approved ads, they're auto-approved after that. Uh, it has text message alerts built in with a custom uh, form action for Clickatel. So let me just show you from an end user's experience first. So I'm signed in actually as my wife, and she already has a seller account. But just looking at the page here, they are what they are. They're classifieds. Uh, you've got the classified summary. You've got the classified details. You've got the additional images as well and you can Ooh, I want that microphone yeah did you see that I thought about you as soon as I clicked on that <laughs> I thought that was a lightsaber at first I couldn't tell what that was <laughs> I'm actually kind of interested in, in this guy's stuff I didn't I looked at it today but he's got some guitars on here I'm I'm a musician uh, but but anyway I'll continue along here uh, you can follow sellers to where when and notice when I clicked on that, this is pretty cool, uh, that this item is from the same seller as this item. And if I click on this follow button, it changes the button below. This is built in real with, time, huh? In real time. This is built with feeds to where it's executing a feed behind the scenes, um, entering the data into the database, bringing back the results from the feed, and using JavaScript to cycle through the entire page and look for particular stuff to change the count on those. So for so, those, of, just let me interrupt you for a second. For those who don't know what feeds are, uh, can you explain that for them, Patrick? Uh, absolutely. A feed is essentially a template outside of the box. So, you know, think about when you build a template, how you've got a list data source and you've got an item template. Well, you can basically call a feed behind the scenes, which produces results. And then you can take those results, just like you would a template, and stick them anywhere on the page that you want. In my case, I've got a button on here, or a link on here, which is the follow link. And, and when that is clicked, it executes a feed behind the scenes. So it calls a feed, and the feed goes into the database. The feed inserts an item. Here's an example. This is another one. This is for a like. And then returns a, a single item template that's got a like count and the ID of the particular ad. And so when that data is returned, it, it updates the ad. And there's actually a like button tutorial on dnn.com where I walk through how to build something like this. 
Uh, this is a sharing feature, which is just, I think I used add this. I can't even remember half the stuff on here anymore. That's integrated as well. So this over here is actually a, these are all, this is all one module instance. Everything that you see on the page here is a single XMOD Pro module instance. The stuff on the left, the stuff on the right, these are all command links. Everything's AJAX enabled. So if it's a category that has uh, child items, we've got the counts all within those. And a user can select those, and it automatically scrolls them to the top. Here's one. Click on hunting and fishing. Automatically scrolls to the top. So this is a very simple yet powerful little system. Let me go to. I will actually. I'm going to jump over here to my. Let me see, I'm going to open in an administrative window. And just to make sure I use the Google deal correctly, can you see Hello Patrick? Yes. Okay, good. So now I'm signed in as another user. Actually, let me uh, let me change this real quick. Pardon the delay. I'm going to sign in as an admin account instead of a host. Okay, I'm back. So now I'm going to show you an interaction. I'm, I'm signed in with Google Chrome as me, and I'm signed in with another browser, Safari, as Bean, which is a wonderful nickname for my wife, and she'll appreciate that since this will be on air and save forever. So let's go to the classifieds here. Pardon the admin menu that you see pop up through this. I am logged in as an administrator. Uh, so let's go down here to baby stuff. I'm going to go to other, and there's some stuff that no longer fits my, my beautiful baby. But I want to inquire about that ad. First, I'm, I'm going to like it, and I'm going to reply to the ad. So when I click this reply button, what you're seeing here is an XMOD Pro form. And how I'm doing this is I have a blank skin and a page that's specifically for inquiries to ads. So that's, I've got it in an iframe and within a fancy box pop-up. I'm going to type, love this item. Uh, can you? So I'm going to send my message. And what's going to happen here is Sarah is going to receive a text message alert to her phone because she has enabled text messaging in her seller account. So now I'm going to switch back to her page. She just received a text message, and the text message said, I'll read it to you. Uh, question, love this item. Can you lower the price? And it says, do not respond to this directly. Use your seller dashboard to respond. So she's going to go to her dashboard, and you can see that she has a new message sitting there. So I'm going to click on Messages, and this should remind you of, well, an iPad, iMessage kind of, kind of deal. So I'm going to select the conversation. And I can see that Patrick said, love this item. Can you lower the price? And Sarah is going to respond to that and say, tech no. Send message. So now if you look at this conversation thread, you can see a very familiar conversation thread. Now back on over here to me, I just received an email alert, not a text message, but an email uh, displaying Sarah's response. I'm going to go to my dashboard, shows I've got a new message, and I can see the new message. Notice how the order of these display. Think of a phone or text messaging. You can see her response on the left, mine on, on the right, but for her screen, it's switched the other way around. So pretty cool intuitive interface. So now I'm going to reply back to her and say, thanks. And I'll switch back over to here. And you can see there's a new message. It updates it with, with the latest information. And 
there it is. So that that entire messaging system is all built with Xmon Pro. And I just want to let you guys know that I built these classifieds in probably just a couple weeks of, of solid time. And, and that's how quickly you can build something with this. If you're not a classified seller yet, you're just a registered user on the site, it won't let you post an ad. It first makes you create a seller profile. So this is the seller profile where they can uh, specify a seller name, address, a location. I mean, it's got searchable locations. Uh, they can add a seller image. contact information, whether they want to receive inquiries via text message. They can set default settings for each of the ads they post, yet they can change them per ad, and then they have to agree to the terms and all finished. So let's go to the ad interface. This is, this is Sarah's interface. These are real ads that are on here. Uh, I can see that I was testing an expiration with her account. I'm sure she appreciated that. So this ad is expired. She can easily renew it right from there. It's not approved yet. It's pending approval. Uh, she can pause her ad from this interface. If she needs to pause it for whatever reason, she can unpause the ad. Uh, she can, here, let me check another one. Let's click on the detail. This is a detailed template right here uh, showing images as well. Shows her short description. She can also utilize all those different controls through here. If she sells an item, she can mark it as sold, and it will display live on the site for a period of time and then automatically be removed. Uh, she can change the per ad settings in here as well. I'll go back. So let me show you the interface to posting an ad. And this is an all, all in XMOD Pro form as well. And I'll immediately have to delete the ad because the site is live. So I'm going to post an ad. You can see where it automatically selects her default location. But let's say this item is located somewhere else. She can change that. Uh, title of the ad, test, subtitle test, put a price in, description, short description, detailed description. Here's those individual items. Continue. She can select a primary image. This is the Exile Ajax uploader for XMOD Pro. Additional images, continue, and she can then select categories and post her ad. Now she can post another viewer ad, go back to her dashboard or browse classifieds. So I'm going to go back to her dashboard and immediately, oops, wrong button. Click that trash can and get rid of that ad. Uh, any questions so far? I'm about to move into. Oh, I do see a question. Sorry, Ryan. Stand alone too. Have you considered breaking that out by itself apart? Yes, I have, Ryan. Actually, I've. That's what I've been doing. Is started to break out this website. This website is so big. I think it covers a good 99% of the features of XMod Pro, and I've got a lot of elements in here that can be separated out. Uh, there is an element on the classifieds which I actually have hidden right now because I wanted to save it as a feature to uh, for people later on. But you can't. But here is the feature. I'll jump over to the home page of the site, and that's the commenting. This is XMod Pro as well, so I'm gonna better not do that. I'll comment on a, one of my posts. So I can test, post, reply, test. Post. You can see the counts going up. I can delete that particular message. Add another one. Add another thread. Reply. Or I can delete the parent comment, which automatically deletes the children. Notice no page refresh. This whole commenting system is also done with feeds as well. Uh, this notify me of new comments. That's all you got to do is check it. And if you re refresh the page, it'll remain checked per post, hide comments. So that is a feature that, that is actually working in the classifieds, but I have it hidden at the moment. So the administrative side of all this, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys that.
So this is the administrative side of the classifieds. You've got pending ads, which just shows one where I can approve it or whatever I want to do, make changes, whatever that might be. Uh, I can go through all ads and search and edit and change things. Locations is where you go in and you set up your locations, where it's city, state, and the way this particular site is built is just for certain areas, uh, but you could certainly do, a, do an insert query to insert every city and state in the United States or every place in the world, I guess, it could be configured for that. Uh, classified categories, this is, and everything you see here, you see these child categories like under appliances. Um, no tricks here, this is all XMOD Pro, this is through a SQL query, a store procedure that uh, appends the little hyphen on there and, and all that good stuff, so it you know sorts them and organizes them in that manner. And I can change the sort order. Let's say I've got a really popular category and I want that to be at the top. I can easily change that. Uh, this is the point system where I can set how many points someone gets when they post an ad. How many points they get one if their ad is an auto-approved ad. If they're a, uh, I'll show you that in a second. Or if they sell an item, they get points for selling an item. But once they sell an item, they cannot unsell an item or else they could keep checking that box and rack up points. Uh, what am I doing with... Just to interrupt, that's a, a reputation system? Yes, it is. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm going to do something with it. So I just I built it in. Even on the seller's dashboard, it tells them that, that um, they're going to get a reputation for this. They're going to build up points. And what I think I'm going to do is allow them to redeem points to highlight their ad or feature their ad or, or something in that manner. Uh, this is Are you going to also maybe uh, post it on the, uh, maybe they achieve a certain tier and a certain number of points, then that gets displayed on each of their, their classified ads so that buyers have uh, some, some semblance of, oh, yeah, this guy has a, a positive history. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. And another thing that I plan on implementing in this is uh, if to allow users to rate sellers, but only after a seller approves the interaction, meaning yes, there's interaction between this person and and I don't I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that, but eventually, you know, a seller has a. I'll jump back over here real quick. I didn't show you this. Here's you know, all of my ads. So sellers have their own seller page to where it shows all of their ads, uh, and I think I'm going to add stuff in here to where it allows consumers to rate a particular seller, comment on a seller, but all that stuff will have to be carefully approved and and, and monitored, so we'll, we'll have to figure out exactly the best way to do that. Levels. This is the level of the seller. Right now there's two levels. Level ID is one, which is free. It's uh, and Level two is called trusted. And how this works is when someone posts an ad, and I click the approve button on that, or one of our staff members clicks the approve button on the ad, it, it, it marks an item as it increases their approved ads by one. Once they get to 10 approved ads, they're automatically changed to the trusted plan. They receive an email notification letting them know that they were changed to the trusted plan. And from there on out, their classifieds are posted automatically without having to be approved. Uh, if we have to reject an ad, it automatically jumps them back down to the free plan until they go through that cycle again and, and gain our confidence back, you could say. Uh, so let me see if I'm forgetting anything. Let's see. I don't think I am. I, I think that's pretty much it for the classifies, unless anyone has any questions. Uh, on any other aspect on how this thing is built. Yeah, can you show us some of the, the, the code behind there and some of the areas? Obviously, there's way too much for you to show us, but uh, any particular feature? Um, or, you know, if anybody who's watching, uh, if you would like uh, Patrick to dive in or dive down onto something specific, uh, go ahead and type in the, the group chat, and we'll get to it. But, Patrick, in the meantime, if you have, a, you know, want to show a particular technique that you used in in one of these areas, that would be great. Uh, yeah, let me sign in as host and think about this for, for just a second. Should we play the Jeopardy music while you do that? Uh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's probably 
for that. Go ahead. No one wants to hear me sing. <laughs> well, um, Patrick, maybe while you're logging out and logging back in, um, this classified solution is something that you're going to release or you're releasing soon, right? Yes. Yes, I'm going to be building this to where it can be packaged, installed, and easily set up. And, and it's the type of thing where I look at it and I see multiple individual pieces that could also be packaged out individually, like I, I asked about the um, uh, about the messaging part of uh, things, but uh, you're, you're right, the commenting part, the messaging part, there have got to be at least four smaller things that are all connected together in this um, that would also be useful, so... Um, I just yeah, what I, what I like is the... the sorry, should, didn't mean to jump on you there, uh, Ryan, just kind of adding on. Uh, I think my favorite part was the the messaging system. It looks a lot like um, if you use uh, an iPhone, it looks like uh, the Messages app in the iPhone. It's very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think one of my goals on this is, you know, like I said in the beginning, is I don't want it to look like DNN. I don't want it to look like a typical form. I don't want it, you know, that classic ASP.NET look. I, well, I just don't want it to look like that. And this got to be cutting edge on on everything that we do. And that's where, what I strive for with everything I do with XCon Pro. Uh, I'll show you this template. Like I said, this is this part right down here. You can see it's all one template. And I've got some styles at the top. If I installed the newest version of XCon Pro, I'd be using the code folding here that Kelly added, but I'm a little slow on installing that. <laughs> but this is, and I'm also using Bootstrap for a CSS framework, and this is the classifieds list template, which is calling a stored procedure to get the classifieds, a pretty big stored procedure because it's got lots of stuff in it. I've got a pager up here, the search and sort, and there's my header template with some hidden stuff, and then the item template. So you can see I've got the ID, classified ID, the, the created date, uh, the title, and the, you know, just the information about the classifieds, the details on the classifieds. And a lot of this stuff, a lot of the features that you're seeing are a little bit behind the scenes. I'll have to let me find my JavaScript stuff. I can show you how that feed works. So you're using, while you're looking at that, you're using uh, jQuery to call those feeds? Yes, I am. And I can, okay. I'll have to dig that up and, and show you guys that. Here's the comments for the classifieds, which are actually hidden right now. And over here, these are the categories. And this was pretty tricky because command links, uh, I mean, if without jQuery, it would list all the parents and all the children as their own link. So I had to go through and identify, well, through the, the database, which one has children, which one doesn't have children. I had to use, you know, join on a lot of this stuff, uh, or no, maybe I removed that. See, you got to pardon me because I can't remember half the stuff I did on this, but, and it basically, it takes all of those command links together, and because what I did, I wanted the really cool feature of feeds, but I also really wanted the functionality, full functionality of templates, you know, the edit buttons and everything. Uh, so I did a lot of mangling on, on these command links to make that happen and to use an accordion to show all that stuff. Uh, this is the scrolling functions, and let's see if I've got, these are, this is the jQuery stuff that is moving all the categories around to put them in the right places. Um, I'm gonna have to find, well, Kelly, I don't know where I put the JavaScript for this. <laughs> it's all right. I uh, didn't mean to put you on the spot there. No, no, no. It, it's in there. I could go and, and dig for it and find it, but let me... That's okay. How about... Um, what I? One of the things I think would be interesting is, and again, I'm going to put you on the spot and, and make you commit in front of all of these people, um, the uh, categories uh, sidebar that you've created, I think that would make for an excellent um, demonstration in, in a Hangout uh, maybe next month's uh, user group, you could show how you 
did that because a lot of people they want a list of categories and even subcategories. They love having the the number of items in those categories displayed as well. And did an excellent job, I think, with uh, uh, developing that. I think it would make for an excellent um, demonstration of of how to do something like that. If if you're up for it, I, of course, you could also just package it up and, and sell it or give it away. But um, yes. <laughs> Sure. I'll, uh, well, one thing I can show you real quick is get categories. Okay, so this is actually the stored procedure to get the categories. And you can see I'm actually generating, because of the nature of how they work and getting it to work with Bootstrap and getting it to work with the accordion, I had to generate HTML directly within the stored procedure. Hmm. And it, it's hard to explain, but you know, when you've got your command links and I, I can put I can turn around and put Kelly back on the spot because certain things <laughs> are not able to be used with, with the join uh, with those with the command link text. But I can't do it if I do it from within the stored procedure. So this is the you know I'm getting the parents and then I'm using union to get the children. And then, and then I I use JavaScript or jQuery to, like I said, put everything in the right spot. Uh, here is the store procedure to get the classifieds, and I've got tons of functions in here to grab additional images. Whether the person that is currently signed in has authority to do anything with that classified. Uh, function to get comments which are hidden, comment count, follow status, follow count, like count, like status, and the detail image, I'm actually generating full paths here. This, the purpose of that is for sharing on social media sites as well. Uh, and if I were to repackage this, I would also have another function that handles this to where no one has to go in and actually edit a stored procedure to deal with it. And Here's a safety feature. Here's a function. If a person can, if the ad can even be seen, you know, based on the user ID, if someone's blocked that person, the owner of the ad, whether they agreed to the seller agreement, whether they're banned or not, the ads active, the ads approved, and so on, or if it's expired, all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, so big system, uh, lots, lots of tables, lots of procedures, lots of functions, all to result in an in intuitive, what I like to believe is a modern. Classy little interface, um, easy to use. So that's all I've got. Unless you got more questions, I think it's spectacular. It's a great um, example of design. And uh, Ryan, I see your uh, mic is still there. You go. Um, I think it's a very impressive example, not just of XMod Pro use, but of design as well. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? I don't see anything in the chat there. Uh, it, I just think it's lovely. It's it's elegant and. It, you're saying that number one priority is a modern look and feel and presentation, and even if you hadn't said that was one of your goals, it's clearly evident in all the things that I've seen you produce, and the classifieds here fits right in line with it. It looks sharp. It really does. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I assume we will be seeing more of that in the the coming months on, on Hangouts. We'll be able to see some of the other things that you built. Uh, of course, if you're interested, although it is a local site uh, in the Paducah or the Western Kentucky area, uh, if you're interested in checking out Patrick's site, you can uh, do that at localliveinads.com. And uh, it's a it's pretty pretty awesome design, and virtually all of it, from what I understand, is uh, is based on Xmod Pro, and that's very cool. We it like is. that. It is everything, and yeah, feel free everyone to bounce around on the site, but. Everything you see on the site is XMod Pro. Great. At this point in time, everybody in the in the room would be clapping and saying what what an awesome thing it was. Um, <laughs> we don't. Oh, Melinda says it was an awesome design, Patrick. So thanks Thank for sharing sure. this. Uh, up next, we've got. Of course, if you guys have any comments, any questions, please put them in the group chat. Uh, and you can also ask questions on the event page later if you happen to be watching this in its recorded form. Um, but for now, we're going to move things along to Ryan Moore of More Creative, a longtime member of the community. 
And Ryan, it sounds like you've got some uh, sharing to do with us uh, about some work with uh, Google Maps. Yep. Um, when we uh, did the last Hangout, uh, we kind of got more technical into things, and we talked about how to do things. Uh, Kelly, you recommended uh, sometime a few weeks back that maybe if we had things to show off, it might be fun to see different things that have been built. And uh, this Google Map-related um, set of things that we've been doing lately uh, was the first thing I thought of. I uh, thought it'd be fun to show. Uh, it's got a lot of fun visuals to it. Um, so... Uh, Let's see. How do I end up sharing my screen again, Kelly? You pass that over to me? Hover over the left side of the screen. There is a green screen with an arrow on it. All righty. It'll pop up a dialog, and you can choose either a window or your whole desktop. Gotcha. I'm, I'm ready to go. If the fan on my laptop doesn't like the video and the screen share, it will start to sound like I'm uh, taking off or flying away. So we'll, we'll see if that... Uh, that continues, but let me know if that's the case. Okay. Um, uh, right now, it looks like your screen is frozen. Uh, well, I'm not doing anything at the moment, but is it uh, is it showing, uh, uh, for instance, the Hannibal site uh, that we worked on earlier, or not? No, we've lost uh, your video. I have. That's is that true, Patrick? Can you see uh, Ryan at all? No. Nope. Now you're moving. That's good. Uh, I don't think you've gotten your screen share started yet, though. He uh he was frozen. Yeah. The Google Maps related XY Pro solution. Huh? Yes, it is. Uh, he the Google Maps uh, is built with XY Pro, or he's leveraging XY Pro to feed data into into Google Maps. And I think he's still trying to figure out how to share his screen. What do we got, Kelly? Is it a sharing screen now? Uh, right now, I just have your uh, avatar on screen. Um, we uh, we passed this back and forth a few times last time, and it's telling me I should be sharing my screen, but it is not. Um, uh, um, if you uh, basically you have to you have to select the uh, <clears throat> from the pop up dialog, you have to select the the screen or the desktop that you want, and then click start screen share. And then it's Certainly, uh, I'm going to switch uh, desktops and see if that makes a difference for it. Okay. In the meantime, Patrick is going to do the Macarena. Yes. <laughs> you really want me to do that, Kel? Yes, I, I, I think Macarena everybody wants to see you do well. that. <laughs> um, right now, I feel like I should break into a, um, a Brett Domino song. Please do. <laughs> Um, I like that Ninja Turtle, Ryan. Is that Ninja Turtle? Um, up in the back corner. Let's see what we got. So you still have my video, huh? Yes. <laughs> I think the problem is that it's tr it's having a problem switching off from a video camera to my screen share. Um, in the back corner, we have um, Clark Kent Superman from the 80s. We've got a uh, modern Bumblebee. Um, but we also have my uh, Star Wars painting in the back that has been altered. So the C-3PO, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, he, he's in a DNN building station, and he's got the DNN logo in Gears and Widgets up there. <laughs> oh, and Han Solo's uh, in the back corner as well. Yeah, yeah I see that. Um, well, this is going to make a very... How about if you share your screen, and then I can see what's going on, and I can tell you what's wrong? Well, I've, I've been trying to share my screen. Uh, what I'm going to do is... Kill the video all together and uh, and see if that um, that helps take care of it. Okay. I had this problem before. I had to leave and come back in. I don't even think uh, Let's see. He does have full control. Just a minor technical glitch. So, Patrick, you want to fill some fill some time? Actually, I should. Uh, find that uh, Brett Domino link. Uh, yeah, let me think about hmm? what to talk about. What? PG-13. Oh. Yeah, well, he's got some PG-13 stuff. PG-13 uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, no, <laughs> Brett Domino is a uh, he's a British uh, comedian uh, songster. Um, 
the Brent Domino trio is actually actually consists of two people. Um, so he's got a lot of these dry dry humor stuff, but it's it's quite hilarious. Um, hey guys, do we have a screen share working now? There hey. we go. Yes. Okay, it's having a problem sharing my whole desktop, and it's only allowing me to share apps at a particular time. Is what well, I that might be okay actually in this case. What I've decided is the problem. Okay. Um, and so um, I want to do a couple things. Make sure you're still seeing the same thing, which I can barely see in the corner. Um. Well then. Um, let me start over here, and I'll, I'll, I'll end up where I was going to start, because I'll have to switch applications. Um, one of the clients we've been working with uh, recently, and, and very heavily, we've added a new employee just for this particular client's project, is um, one that has a lot of internal intranet logistics and dashboards and statistics that have to be seen by management uh, to understand what's going on uh, company-wide. And it's the type of thing where the people who have access to the database know everything that's going on and everyone else flies blind. So we've been working on creating dashboards and interfaces that help show them um, show them that data and give them through .NET Nuke and log in through Active Directory users um, the ability for everyone to see a little bit of this data and, and slice and dice the data just like the people who have access to the reports in the, the real database. Um, it's the type of thing where I can't log in and actually show it to you um, in code because I have to be on a VPN and that I know doesn't match up well with me doing a screen share and Google handout at the same, uh, Hangout at the same time. So uh, we're taking a look at some screenshots that I, I prepared earlier this morning uh, just to, to show off uh, these types of things. So one example of, of stuff that's built top to bottom in XMOD Pro is a Gantt chart uh, type of project outline. Um, based on the myriad of, of data tables that they have that tell, uh, tell them about their particular projects and the timeline of when a project goes to construction, when it's almost complete and it's going to inspection, when it's going through final inspection, and then when it is uh, approved and, and uh, finally completed. Um, so here in this uh, screenshot, uh, what you see up at the top is an XMOD Pro form uh, that's used to allow you to switch the project managers or the people involved and take a look at the date range for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days and, and you know do a couple of drop downs and then hit search and then it loads up the two tabs uh, down below with the um, visualizations in place and if, if I had to title this set of, of things I'm trying to share with you here it's um, how much fun it is to put together visualizations with uh, what Google allows us to do very easily. So. In this particular case, we are producing two tabs. Uh, one is for a Gantt chart view of projects, and the other one is a um, simple table view of those same projects. It's the type of thing where some people, when they view this, they want to see it just in an Excel type of um, spreadsheet view. Uh, in fact, that's what they used to do, passing it back and forth to each other in Excel files. And we created uh, this that is, uh, as you see here, one X1 Pro template underneath of one X1 Pro form. And the template has uh, a pair of uh, jQuery tabs in it. And in one, we're showing a simple top to bottom um, table view of, uh, of the data. And then in the Gantt um, chart tab, we are displaying a Google chart. Um, a, Google, uh, a Gantt chart isn't any different to Google than other things like pie charts and bar charts. You're just putting the data in uh, a little bit differently. Uh, it is JSON data, so part of what we're doing here in this XMON Pro template is um, getting the records uh, from SQL, then um, in our header and then item templates, uh, formatting that and spinning it out uh, in JSON so that then it renders this particular um, this particular Gantt chart. The user is able to scroll up and down and then see a beginning to end um, list of all of their projects and what the timelines are. Uh, you kind of see in here in the middle, the black line is today's date. So if something started a while back, you can see the past, today's date, and then all the way over to the future. Um, the other tab is, is taking a look at the, the same thing in table view. Um, one of the things I wanted to show that, that I um, enjoy putting together, and I put this part together myself um, versus others in, in our crew here, um, is some error trapping. Um, it's the type of thing where bad data exists in some of their records in the database. 
and the um, the chart view that we produce, which is a very simple, it is a table versus divs. I mean, it's a very simple table structure. The table structure and the chart view, it won't care if the data is bad, but the Gantt chart does care if data is bad. The Gantt chart will not render. No speck of it will render if the start date on an item of inspection is after the end date. In other words, the dates have been entered in wrong, in the wrong order, and it starts before it, it ends before it starts, then uh, Google will put up a complaint, and it won't render anything in that Gantt chart. So part of what we did um, here is we made sure that if we detect anything where the end date is before the start date, or it's out of range and we have a 1-1-1900 or something like that, then in the display of the chart, uh, we go ahead and highlight it in a, a pink color so you make sure that at a glance you can see, hey, maybe I need to take a look at this particular um, uh, this particular date and here in this particular one, what you can see is that the for this project, the construction complete date is the 23rd, whereas the start date is the 25th. Obviously, that's going to be bad data and it's not going to allow it to to render correctly in the Gantt chart. So we, we do some trapping with XMOD um, selects, which is XMOD's uh, if-else case uh, kind of block um, processor. Uh, so we give a little bit of an alert up there, and then down below we go ahead and give some more information about whatever that, uh, that error was. So if there are three or four of these in the table, then you'd have three or four of these uh, red bars down at the bottom that tell you Gantt chart error encountered, end date before start date, or you know, out of range or null or, or what have you. So, um, you know, kind of a, a, a fun, uh, quick visual to show you. Um, if you haven't thought of doing visuals, um, when I talk with Xmon Pro, people who are just getting started, they're, they're thinking very simply in tables and lists and views. And I think if you look at some of what uh, Patrick was showing earlier, you can see um, beauty and elegance in all kinds of things, templates and forms, and if you need other kinds of visualizations, there are plenty of helper systems out there to get those visualizations, like like this in a Gantt chart. We didn't build this from scratch, we just put it into Xmon Pro and uh, and built the rest with, uh, with the tools at hand. Um, I'm going to move away from this uh, Gantt chart and go over to some of the mapping solutions, but uh, before I do that, uh, any questions about the Gantt chart that we made, or, or uh, I don't know, Kelly, a shout out. Is it still showing the screen correctly? Yeah, we're good. All right. I think one of the um, one of the interesting points that I would take away from that is that I, I think you're right that a lot of people use Xmod Pro or they view it as a, well, it's a way to get data into it. You know, create data entry forms and then display that data in a list or a detail, kind of like article uh, headlines and uh, yeah. an article detail view. But what a lot of people don't realize is that Xmod Pro can allow you to just format data. To output data into whatever format a particular plugin might need. So, when you come across an API like a Google Maps API or the Google Charts API or any of the jQuery plugins, uh, you're not restricted by what uh, some developer has said. Okay, well, this data gets laid out in a table all the time or something like that. You are, as as you said, as you did for your Grant, Gantt chart. Uh, example, you formatted it as JSON data there in the page and then Correct. put it there. To Google Charts, so I think that's that's a very good takeaway that uh, Xmod Pro can go much beyond, much more beyond just displaying records. Yep, I, I agree. And and you take a look at this this particular page, and what we have at the top is a an Xmod Pro form. The whole purpose of this form is just to pass us back to this page with query strings in place or with values in place to to change the data we're looking at. Now this the, is in this is in the host view, right? So a lot of that is host view, so that I can show you, yeah. Yeah. I'm in host view so that I can show you what tables I'm using and, and you know what you know forms versus templates and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but displaying it on the screen, we display it once. Uh, you know, in one X, you know, it's all one XMod Pro template. But we render the Gantt chart in one section of the template. We have another section inside of it that then uh, renders out the calendar view, um, which is really just a table structure. Uh, then we have another template down at the bottom that um, is just a link to an Xmon Pro feed, and we're spitting out an Excel spreadsheet because you know we know that internally people are supposed to use the Gantt chart, they're supposed to use this view, but they're used to passing back and forth an Excel spreadsheet that they made by hand. 
by copying out of the database and pasting into Excel. So we went ahead and just made a button for them. So if they're used to doing it that way, fine. They can click a button and export uh, an Excel file. Um, oh, it's 2.51. I'm going to need to run in about nine, in exactly nine minutes, in eight minutes if I can do it. So let me, uh, let me hit maps here real quick. Um, uh, this um, particular uh, project also had a lot of visualization necessary for where these projects were occurring because what they do uh, is related to uh, cell towers and any type of tower that needs inspection and review, um, that type of thing. So they have people back at the main office that plan out the routes for the salespeople and for the technical engineers and all these people to go around to these different locations and they needed a scheduler. So what we created for them was a trip scheduler and here we're using some complicated integrations with Google Maps. Um, on the left you can see that you're zooming in and out of a giant map and you can see all of these points uh, plotted out as little tower icons. On the right hand side in the color coded bars you can turn on and off many different buckets of these locations. So you can have a lot of stuff going on uh, at the bottom, we can also turn on Home Depots and all their offices and the airports. And the whole point of this system is that when you um, you switch tabs here, you see there are three uh, tabs kind of uh, vertically, um, member filters, the map filters, and then you get down to your work, which is scheduling trips. And when you switch to the tab, you get a list on the right-hand side of all the people who are able to run these routes and to do these... Um, uh, to do these trips and what you do is you find on the left your uh, zoom level that you are project planning for at the moment maybe you're in the middle of Illinois maybe you're doing all of North Carolina and you start dragging these towers so the screenshot here is that I've clicked on a tower that was in the middle of the left and I've drug it as soon as you drag it the list on the right becomes active and you see the dotted lines to show you where you're dragging and letting go and when you let go you have begun building a trip. And so here I've drug into Chad Smith, uh, agent. I've drug into him three different towers. And as I drag them in, they start to build a list. You can use the X to delete them out of the list, uh, or you can click to find more details about them. Uh, there's a button on the bottom left that allows you to you know, click to say show route on map and then it uses another Google process to decide it's called the traveling salesman um, decision uh, or calculation and it decides the fastest uh, least miles between these different locations and it'll tell you go to one two or three or three two or one or whatever um, so you click on that and it does another call to Google uh, services uh, figures out the best ma um, mapping uh, route for this and uh, then displays that route and what I can do is I can click on multiple different people and show all these different routes on the screen and if it makes more sense for another guy to in the same area to catch it I can drag the tower from one guy to the second guy and then reroute the trips and uh, and make it the most efficient possible um, it has a particular look to it um, you, know, you wouldn't tell that this is not in nuke you wouldn't tell that this is Xmon Pro but it's all built um, inside of Xmon Pro in a handful of templates. Um, uh, I guess kind of finishing the, the thought out of what you're looking at here, you end up running through the map and then you click to finalize your trip. Uh, you're finalizing your trip then... Hello? Let's see. Finalizing your trip then um, brings up a pop-up window and that pop-up window allows you to set some more information that you might need to about this particular person, who else is going with them, um, some dates that you want these things to be completed, and then you can finalize the trip or you can click to dissolve and undo the trip and, and kind of start start from scratch again. Um, so I hate that I'm, I'm running up against a time limit. I've got a call that I've got to start at 3, but... Um, uh, this mapping solution has been a ton of fun to create, and I, I've thought about it often, about all the fun visuals that are here, the drag and drop actions, uh, the filters, we have growl going on, so that and as we add items or remove items, uh, we get little uh, uh, growl notifications showing up that something's loaded or something's been dissolved. Um, it's all built, kind of like Patrick was saying earlier, uh, it's all built without page refreshes, all of it being Ajax calls for things where we can, um, and um, real-time, there's a ton of feeds involved. 
Um, so if we wanted to dissect a little deeper at some other point, we can, but uh, at the very least, um, I've accomplished what I wanted to, which was to, uh, to show what I thought were some fun visuals there. Um, if I can accomplish it, I'm going to try and switch screens now just to show um, Chrome and see if that's going to work out or not. Uh, because the thing to show there would be um, uh, one of the other Google mapping solutions that we have. Um, Kelly, has that switched out on screen or not? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, a recent project um, through um, Dean and Dev that was uh, for uh, an Exmo Pro client was to help produce uh, some other stuff that is in a business directory. Um, that's a whole side topic, but uh, one point to mention there is that uh, in it we integrated our Google Map um, item that we are going to be releasing as a, as a side solution or as a side project um, module kit uh, in the next month or so. Um, this is a standalone item that basically gives you a map on one side with clustering so that you can see multiple points grouped together with one icon and as you zoom into that particular icon uh, then those individual points separate out. Uh, it's an easy way for you to show hundreds of uh, records of something on a screen without it overwhelming the screen um, whereas uh, individual points very quickly um, tire the screen or, or, or wear it out. Um, but you end up having on the right hand side a list of locations. You can click to jump to those locations and see where they are. Um, or you can then go to a, a page uh, of what those are. That's, that's kind of a separate item. But viewing the locations on the map is uh, part of it. And then the larger listing that gives you some more uh, display. Uh, kind of what you have on screen here is template number one showing you the map location. Template number two showing you the ability to control those map points and jump around and then template number three giving you a an address uh, type of uh, listing of all of those items that you can then connect up to a detail uh, page or to anything else that you put together in uh, .NET Nuke or in Xmon Pro. Um, so again, uh, if I gave a title to the things I was showing, um, Google um, APIs and Google calls for charts and diagrams and maps. They are all so easy to do. They're a great source of, um, of heavy lifting that you can do that you don't have to do yourself through Dynanuke or coding on your own. You are simply connecting into it and connecting your data and using them to do some pretty awesome displays. That's excellent. That's excellent. One minute, yeah. So I know you have, a, you have to run, um, but just like I put Patrick on the spot, maybe I'll that put you on the spot. And um, uh, maybe you can come back and show us how to do a simple uh, integration with, with Google Maps, maybe to have a list of uh, points uh, yep. that you're pulling out of the database and then uh, pop them down on the map. I think that would be a great great session for a user group. Would love to. All right. Well, get out of here then. I, I absolutely will. I hate that I'm going to miss the, the last parts here of the Hangout. Um, I know we can't hear everyone else that might be watching, but um, it's always fun to hang out with folks, even if they're virtual, and even if I can't quite hear them. Um, it's uh, great fun to uh, hang out with other folks that are focusing on XMOD Pro and DNN solutions like we do every day. And uh, we'll catch you next month. All right. See you, Ryan. Thanks. Bye. Okay, well, actually, that about does it. Uh, we're at the end of our hour. Um, if you do have questions, though, uh, and would like to uh, type them into the, the group, group chat, we can answer them. Um, if not, though, we will uh, see you uh, in August. Uh, hot August around here. Um, but we'll, we'll see you the fourth Thursday every month. So, um, actually, I don't know what that date is uh, for August, but uh, a quick look at the calendar. The 28th? Yeah. Okay, so August 28th will be our next session. Um, also, I am uh, planning on, or I'm thinking about doing some uh, extra uh, on-air uh, uh, training sessions, uh, specifically for people who want to build extensions for Xmod Pro. And if you're interested in that, be sure and uh, either post a message here on the, uh, on the uh, a comment on the video, uh, if you're watching it uh, as it's been recorded, or just send me a, a, an email at kford at dnndev.com, and we will uh, try to put something like that together. It'll be a series of things. We'll talk about how to create custom form controls for Xmod Pro, 
uh, custom tags that you can use in your templates and also custom actions that can go into forms. And a custom action can be actually quite simple or very complex. It is something that would uh, run after, after your uh, form has been submitted. Uh, it gets all the data from the form, and then you can uh, do whatever you want with it. You can uh, populate more tables in your database. You can um, send emails. Uh, you can do anything you normally can do in a server-side program uh, with the data from that form. So they're very powerful and uh, underutilized. And that'll be one of the things that we'll talk about as well. So if you're interested in that, I'm trying to gauge interest for it. Um, let me know, kford at dnndev.com, and I will get back to you. That's it. Um, we will see you in a month, and hopefully we'll see you between now and then on the dnndev.com site, answering questions in our community and uh, posting ideas and thoughts in our discussion area on the site. And, of course, if you have questions between now and then, you can always uh, send me an email, uh, kfordedndev.com again, or uh, add a support ticket at support.dnndev.com, and we will get back to you. So thanks very much for joining us in uh, this hot Thursday uh, in July, at least here in Arizona it is, and uh, we will see you next month. Thanks a lot.